five. In five, four, three, two. What's up, Facebook? How are you guys doing? And welcome to another edition of Lunch Break. It is Valentine's Day week, all week long. We're putting the hammer down to make your Valentine's Day the best ever. Well, he's back. Straight from Mexico, right off the plane, your barbecue uh, expert, our Rec Tech Grill expert, Jody Flanagan. Everybody, how's it going? Hey, happy Tuesday. We are live once again here from the Rec Tech Worldwide Headquarters in beautiful Evans, Georgia. It is lunch break. We do this every Tuesday and Thursdays, 12 noon Eastern Standard. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I'm Jody Flanagan, Barbecue Dad, John's Rec Tech expert, of gotcha. course. Always. But thank you guys so much. Um, on the ones and twos, Chef John Pinnell. That's hey, right. John. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Great friend. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm so happy to see you. Oh. You're back. Oh, man. It's great to be back. You guys knocked Fun Day Friday out of the park. We had a great time, too, my friend. Delicious wings? Mm-hmm. All different kinds of ways. And you know what? Wow. We did a little tribute to you in that Daytona wing. Oh, God. I'm sure there were <laughs> some, sure some stories told that day. There were. Um, but <laughs> we're going to have a good time today. It is all about... The filet mignon, the filet mignon. That's right. Today, that's right. Uh, we're gonna top it with crab, dress it with some hollandaise sauce, mm -hmm. and then even puts a little bit of broccoli, broccolinis Ooh. next to it. Okay, this is a great dish, ladies, gentlemen, to cook for your partner. Now we're gonna start out. We need to go ahead and get started because this is gonna take a hot minute. We've got a whole beef tenderloin. That's right. This is the most tender part of the cow. Okay. And this is where your filet mignons, when you purchase them at the store uh, or online, this is the part of the cow that those filet mignons come from, okay? Now you can see this is, there's a lot to this. It can be very confusing, um, but don't worry. We're about to break it down for you. I'm about to, uh, to get to this thing. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, put them in the comment section. Chef John will get to them. We're going to try to answer all of your uh, filet um, and beef tenderloin questions. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to take um, our hand, and you'll see that there is kind of like a another separate muscle here. Right, John? Yes, right. And uh, what I like to do, I don't like to get my knife. I just like to take my hand and kind of come in and separate this okay easy peasy lemon squeezy now if we were going to cook this whole you know we uh i would still take this off but That's right. That's right. um easy peasy lemon squeezy it just comes right off now, Jody, if you have some knife skills, you could actually trim some of that stuff up, and that's good meat to use for beef stew. Absolutely, or that's, that's what I was just about up. to say. Uh, again, like you said, if you've got some knife skills uh, and know how to do it, that is some good meat uh, for stocks and stews and, and things of that nature. So there's uh, another muscle that we need to kind of separate here. That'll be that guy right here. But we're going to clean up. I call this the bottom part just because it's got the most cleaning up to do. What do you call it, John? What do you, uh, just that trim work, buddy, that trim. You just call it the trim side? That's right, the oh, trim okay. side. Okay, I like, I like that, much better. Or than the, the tail side. the top or bottom. Mm -hmm. But guys, smash that share button, give us a like, give us a love. It's all about cooking for your loved one, cooking for your better half, cooking for your dogs if you're celebrating. Heck, cooking for mom or dad. That's right. For Valentine's Day. It's all about the love. We're spreading the love this week. Make sure you, you set your notifications because all this week we're going live with some amazing Valentine's recipes. That's right. All of these recipes can be found at rectechgrills.com and rectech.com forward slash lunch break. But any good questions, John? Okay, well, talk, uh, speaking of spreading the love, Jody, a lot of people want to know how was Mexico? 
You got back safe. I did. I did get back safe. Mexico was amazing. Thank you to uh, uh, all of the, the workers and all of the folks out there making everything happen. The frontline Delta workers and such. I wouldn't have been able to go if it wasn't for y'all. Um, but yeah, Mexico was, it was great. Um, but I did miss the babies and glad to be back stateside. Did you miss me, John? Oh, I missed you like the deserts miss the rain, my Aww. friend. I'm telling like you, the, this place is not the same like without the our barbecue dad. Out in Africa. That's what I'm talking about. All right, Jody, so they want to know where did you pick this piece of meat up? Where could you find a so whole tenderloin? I got this at our local grocery store. Uh, shout out to Publix. You could also get them at, you know, Kroger's here locally. But this was not out on the meat counter, okay? This was behind the meat counter. And, um, so you had to ask for it. I did. I had to ask the butcher behind the counter. And it was actually the man to draw on duty. And I said, hey, ma'am. Do you guys have any whole beef tenderloins? And she's yeah. like, yes. How many do you need? There you go. Now, Jody, they also want to know, so what parts are good for um, the trimmings are good for stocks and soups, and what parts Absolutely. of the trimmings are not good to use? Uh, everything's good on this bad boy. Again, this is uh, the most tender part of the cow. That's Just right. As long as you take off the silver skin, you really, you really shouldn't have any issues whatsoever or have any problems. Now, John, being classically trained, yes, sir. do you have a name? For this kind of uh, 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 flappy part here on the it on does the edge? it does have a name, uh, but it's still part of the tenderloin. I can't exactly can't remember which. It's like there's a major and a minor muscle, right? Uh, right so it's right. one of the two. Um, but I'm, I like to do the exact same thing that you're doing. I trim that piece off, and then it cuts into two beautiful Correct. steaks. And so I just, just follow that, that seam. Right That's seam. it, right there. Right there. Boop. Cut it on down, easy peasy. And again, like John said. You can cut this into, trim this up, cut this into some good steaks. But what we're after today is there are those filet mignons. And so I want to get two good, bomb filet mignons for John and I because it is our date night, date day today. That's right. For That's right. Uh, lunch break. Now, if you guys didn't know, we do this on Thursdays as well over on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Heck, even as well as our uh, friends over at Kingsford, make sure you subscribe to their YouTube channel as well because we've got a lot of amazing content that we partner up on that you guys can go in and check out. Now we got a question from Michael Wilson. Now, now he if you said, were going to tie it up, you know, of course, you, you know, you would tuck it over. I would have left that piece on there. We would have just tied it really, really tight. Um, but again, today we're looking for those filet mignons. So I'm going to trim that off. And you pretty much answered that question. He asked if you were to cook this thing whole, how would you do that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we've actually got a couple of videos and a couple of recipes, um, but we just tie it up really, really tight. Like I said, we would flap it over, um, tie that uh, major and minor kind of stuck together. We would tie it up really, really tight. Keep that size very consistent the whole way across. Uh, you can uh, slow smoke it. You can do it at 225 until an internal temperature of about 130. We did it some internal temperature of 100, That's and right. we seared it off on the RTB 380. Sure enough, did. Bullseye at 500 degrees plus. Guys, smash that share button. I'm about to show you how to do a delicious uh, filet mignon for you and the loved one this Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Ladies, you'll impress your loved ones. Fellas, I'm talking to you. You'll definitely impress the ladies by showing them how to do this now again if you don't want to get a whole beef tenderloin they can be kind of expensive you don't have to but I did so we can get a few steaks out of this all right all right so again there's a little bit of silver skin and that's all we want to do easy peasy lemon squeezy don't ever think it okay now what I like to do is I want to get a couple of steaks from the thickest most thickest part Right about there. What do you what say you, Chef John? Yes, center cut. Right, baby? That's always the best. So, because the butcher kind of helped me out right here, I am going to make an incision right here. <whistles> look at that. Ooh, look at that. Looking good, Jody. Right. So, we're going to make one filet mignon. I'm going to use my knife to kind of measure it. Deliberate cut. Look at that. Shoot that little ya. bad boy right there. Shoot ya. Measure it up with my knife. We got two beautiful, gorgeous, sexy, delicious, tender, succulent, about to absorb some smoke, tender, 
the baby fillet McDonald's. <laughs> okay? We'll continue to cut down. So we're not going to waste this. Oh, that's a pretty good cut right there, too, Bo. But guys, smash that share button. Three, two, one. Smash, smash it. it. Give us some love. Show us some love. I'm going to bring this other bad boy back over here. We're going to cut some fillets from it as well. But don't be afraid. These Jody, things are going to be delicious. Yes, sir. We had a great time yesterday, yesterday on Mix It Up Monday. It was awesome. Erica, our Erica, dirty girl Erica, oh yeah, she did pairing up job. drinks. I did some beef crostini. It was amazing. Thank Use you. that tri tip. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. And again, we cut this up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We won't cut that up today. But we have got what we were looking for out of that beef tenderloin. We got about seven. Could have gotten about eight or nine out of there. But these look absolutely beautiful. All right, let's come on over here. We've got the RT B380 rolling at 500 degrees. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of 500 with the sear kit. Put a little bit of oil on that sear kit. Let it get nice and conditioned. Next thing I'll do, I've got over here on the RT 340, I've got about two sticks of butter. Okay. And I'm heating it up. I want to get it to about 165 degrees because we're going to make some Hollandaise sauce uh, with it as well. So. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we're going to season up these awesome filet mignons. You've got to get seasoning all the way around these, okay? Um, so what I like to do, get a handy dandy pan. Okay. That way we don't waste any of this seasoning, okay? Hit it with a little bit of oil. Not too much. Why, John? Why is, is too much oil on your steak a bad thing? Because moisture is the enemy oh. of crisp. We're trying to get a nice crust That's on right, the outside baby. of that we, steak. That is right. That is right. You took the words right out of my mouth, son. Moisture is the enemy of crispy. Okay? If you want a nice, beautiful crust on the outside, you've got to use good ingredients, That's not right. too much moisture. So the oil for this is, we're just using it as a binder, Extra right? Extra virgin olive oil, that's right, absolutely. And the only seasoning for steak that I choose is Ben's Heifer Dust, salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, paprika, cayenne. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are going to liberally, heavily season these up. You guys can see that super thick pretzel salt in there, that paprika. Yes. Uh, the parsley. Okay. I like to dab, be very, very gentle, dab it in. Don't rub it, don't rub it in. That's not gonna do anything for you, okay? Just dab it in. Now, that RTB380 is rolling right along. Yeah, it is. At 500 degrees already. Okay? I already, already see the smoke coming That's from. right. We preheated it and it, uh, that sear kit, now that's a half moon. We don't sell those at rectech.com, but we do have sear kits for the RTB 3D at rectech.com. You can check out that half moon sear kit at grillgrate.com. Shout out to Brad, Rectech owner and uh, owner of Grill Great as well. That's right. Rectech family member and owner of Grill Great. All right, so because I use that pan, I can roll the sides of these oh. and all of that extra seasoning and yeah. I didn't waste anything. That's a good tip right there. Right? Okay, don't overthink it, but again, I'm not wasting any of that seasoning right there. Hit all sides of that steak. Why? Because we want a good crust. We want a good caramelization on the outside. So we need some good texture. And again, don't overthink these steaks. Smash that share button, guys. Three, two, one. Smash, smash it. it. Jenny, we got a question from Valerie Carmony. Hey, Valerie. She local. She Rick asks, Tech. how long have the grill grates been heating up? They've been in there for about 20 minutes. And okay. that grill has been at 500 for about 10 minutes. Um, so they'll probably be in there, you know, another couple of minutes. I'm going to let these steaks sweat down. Now that we've coated them on all sides, I'm going to hit them one more time, extra high, just to make sure that we got good crust on the outside. Yes. We'll let those sweat down just a little bit, okay? Now, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Feels so good to be back. Yeah. The Super Bowl. Mm. Man, Brady pulled it out again. Man, not Jeez only pulled it crackers, out, Tampa man. Bay as a team put a shellac in. Woo, Tampa Bay did good. Tampa the, Bay did good. Shout out Chiefs. to everybody that put some money down on, yeah. uh, on the Bucks. That's right. You know, unfortunately, Russell, not Russell Wilson. Oh, no. <laughs> um, no Patrick Mah Mahomes yeah. was rushed a little too much. Yeah. A little too much pressure. 
Okay. I talked to him after the game, and called him up, and yeah, he, he was upset. He dude. was. I bet he was. He was a little upset. He didn't want to talk for too long, but he said he's not done. Right he said, you know, down but not out, Chef John. Yep. I'm coming back. I was like, okay. Yep. And he went right to the gym right after. Sure enough, did. He, he yep. said there I'm are sure no off oh days. Gosh. I'm sure he's watching tape right now. Yeah, he is. Yeah, um, he's watching ready? the show actually right now. He, he oh, called yeah, before. He's shout watching our the buddy show. Pat, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. We love you, Bo. We do. All right. That's funny, John. You don't know Patrick Mahomes. He doesn't know Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> don't hate Jody because I got, you know, powerful, influential friends that play football. <laughs> Yeah, same hair. That's same right. Color, same barber. You know. Yeah. Family lineage. That's how yada, we got it. That's right. That's, That's right. funny. All right. <laughs> Let's get to it. All right. So, Bob, I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes for those steaks to sweat out. I've got some, what is this? Broccolini. I've got some broccolini, everybody. Yeah. I actually um, uh, a la uh, hit, hit it with a little bit of boiling water for a couple of minutes, okay? So, you want to blanch those off? I went ahead and blanched those off so that it would be super easy and quick to cook. Nice. Uh, I've got the RT700 sitting behind me, sitting at 450 degrees. Okay. I've got a cast iron lodge in there. I'm going to hit it with some oil. And I'm, that olive oil is going to make sure that my butter doesn't burn. And I'm going to hit it with a little bit of butter. Jody, we have a question for Chris Dewey. He asks, is it worth the extra money to pay for Prime or Choice? Or is Choice plenty good enough? No, Choice, choice just depending on where you get it from and how you season it, is good, I uh, promise you. Um, but, you know, it, it, to each his own. You know, I can make a good steak out of a Choice one. But if I've, but if I've got some, you know, family members coming over and I want to impress them, you know, maybe, you know, I get that, that Prime. Maybe I go to Costco. Maybe I go to the butcher shop and uh, get that extra good meat that way i can guarantee that it's going to be delicious so you you're, so you're suggesting that people just go own. out and just try you know try the absolutely. different just types of steaks it. and see, see what, what they like, like. Mm -hmm. absolutely okay. and i think you know they all take a little bit of work cooking you know so it, it's going to be you know a little bit of work either way but you've got to try it in order for you to be able to know what it tastes like okay all right so again i've got olive oil and butter in a pan i'm going to throw in some garlic and in about 30 seconds, when that becomes fragrant, I'm gonna throw in my broccolini, and we'll let those saute together in delicious harmony of <laughs> together. All right, Jenny, we have a question from top fan, also Courtney it, Sheffield. Hey. She asks, is there a difference in flavor between Peter regular broccoli and broccolini? Yes, uh, for sure. Uh, broccolini is a little bit lighter, uh, for sure, because again, it's, I guess they're, I don't know who developed broccolini or what scientist made it up, um, but uh, it, you know, it was made to be lighter and a little bit easier uh, on the digestive system as well. So I took these blanched ones and I just like to cut them in half, throw them in there, and we're just gonna saute these bad boys up. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, a little bit of green onion. Don't overthink mm -hmm. it, you know. Again, we're having fun. Season it with Vince heifer dust. We've got some awesome garlic notes in there. Good bit of butter and oil. Everything's gonna marry and get to know one another and it's gonna be absolutely delicious. I'll Looks hit that delicious. broccolini with a little bit of that Vince heifer as well. Close the lid. Night, night, okay? Now, it's time to put these steaks on, baby. Get on in here, Sherpa Jordan. <laughs> And again, you saw I put oil on there. I'm not going to put oil on there any longer. Why? Because if I put oil on there, moisture is there the go. enemy of crispy, ladies right. and gentlemen. So take our steak, oh. put it on there. I like to give it a good press. That way it evenly distributes that heat across that sear kit. Boop, boop. We're just looking for a nice, flat, consistent sear across this whole piece of meat. That is looking Easy piece awesome. of lemon squeezy. Because they're th so thick, we'll be able to see how far they've actually cooked through when we check on them in just a minute. Night, night. But again, that sear kit, it's made out of pressed ionized aluminum, and it gets hotter than the grill does, okay? Um, so, you know, by design, you know, it's gonna get hotter. If you set the grill to 500 degrees, that sear kit's gonna get up to about 600, 650 degrees. If you don't believe me, hit it with an infrared thermometer. I promise you, okay? Now, we've got that broccolini in there. Getting to know, got a little extra garlic. I feel like, I'm, no need in wasting that stuff. 
We got our broccolini in there. That's only going to take a couple of minutes, okay? Now, we need to do, ooh, I'll put a little bit of lemon zest ooh. in there as well. John, you got a good question? Yeah, Mark Wilson asked, where do you get your seasonings? Oh, you can check out Rectech.com, guys. Rectech.com. Check out the rub and sauce bundle. I promise you, you won't be sorry. You will thank me later. But check out the rub and, rub and sauce bundle available at Rectech.com. It's got one of everything. Just get it so you can try everything. Mm -hmm. I promise you'll, you'll like all of our rubs and sauces. No binders, no fillers, no anti-kicking right. agents, yeah. any of that crap. Yeah. Uh, very little ingredients. They mix well together. So well together. Yeah, absolutely. But shout out to everybody watching now. Yeah. Thank you so much. The next thing we got to do is make this holiday sauce, okay? So I've got three egg uh, yolks right there, mm -hmm. isolated. John took my egg whites. Sure enough, okay? did. Uh, I've got a little bit of Ron Screaming Pig, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Doesn't that look cool, John? Mm -hmm. I did that. It looks great. You it looks neat, right? Look at you. Look pretty cool, huh? Look at you. All right. So you can do this by hand. I'll show you by machine right now. Because I don't know if a lot of people know, but this is kind of an intimidating sauce for a lot of people. It can I've, be, I found John. Out, One of my yolks broke. Y'all, please, please bear with me. But yeah, it can be a little bit intimidating, but it's absolutely delicious. Now, um, you know, you, you don't want to refrigerate this sauce and eat it later. You want to keep it warm and eat it within, you know, 12 hours because you are eating technically, you know, raw eggs. I know the butter is technically cooking it, but you're eating a raw egg. Detroit. So I put a little bit of lemon juice in there. My seasonings, we'll let this mix well on low for just a second. Now what we'll do is I've got my butter and I'm just gonna slowly pour my butter in. Okay. We're sitting at about a, hopefully 165 degrees. Hopefully, hopefully John. I believe in you, so Jody. We'll turn it on low and we'll just, oh God, we'll just go slow. Oh God, made a mess. We'll just go slow. Pouring it in nice and slow. And it's gonna mix. And mix. And what we want it to be is we want it to be dark. No, not dark. Nice but like a, a light, thick, yeah. darker orange. That's right, everybody. Mm. Smash that share button. Three, two, one, smash, smash it. it! Jody is making Hollandaise live on the show right now. Often imitated, never duplicated. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's a little thin, John. It's a little thin. I need to get a little egg yolk. I need to get another egg yolk. Mm. I bet it tastes delicious, though. It does taste delicious. Right, let me go get my other Hollandaise sauce really quick. Jordan? It's on the, yep. All right, you can see by the side of this bad boy, we want to pull these off when they naturally pull away, okay? This one took a little while. It took a little pulling, but we'll pull it off. Make sure you have long handle tongs with this bullseye, because it is bad to the bone. This thing is hot. It is like a stick of dynamite, ladies and gentlemen. It is the hottest pellet grill out there on the market today. You cannot get a hotter pellet grill anywhere in America, I promise you. Check out Rectech.com. This thing is bad to the bone. Now, we're looking for an internal temperature, about 130 degrees, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. All right, come back over here, John. We added that extra yolk, and check out that delicious Hollandaise sauce right Looks there, John. Looks so good, Joe. Now this is gonna this is gonna have a little bite to it. You know, it's got some lemon in it. It's got some salt. 
It's got some pepper. It's got a little bite of cayenne mm -hmm. from that run screaming pig rub. So all of that fat and all of that savoriness, you know, from that steak, this sauce is really gonna bite into That's it. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Give us a, a good flavor. Now, I'm gonna put this over here on the RT700, right there on the barrel. And my grill is actually gonna keep that warm for me. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Anytime you're cooking any type, any type of steak, ladies and gentlemen, you need an instant read thermometer. Uh, instant read thermometers like this uh, Thermapin, this MK4, have a very small tip at the end. They work really, really well for testing the internal temperatures of meat, but they do not work well testing the internal temperature of your grill. Mm. So you cannot use this to detect the internal temperature of your grill, okay? And don't use any handheld thermometers to try and detect the internal temperature. It just doesn't work. It works really well detecting the internal temperature of meat. Because right. again, you're inserting it in that piece of meat. That meat surrounds that whole tip. So you're able to get a very accurate reading, okay? So let's go over here to these steaks and check the internal temperature of them. We're at about 80 degrees. That one's at about 100. And that was about 100, so we need a little bit of time, a little while longer, but we got plenty of time. Now, Roccalini, Roccalinis are done. Ooh, yes, they out. smell delicious. Don't they though, John? Gotta smash that share button. Some delicious pan roasted Roccalini, mm. garlic sauce, garlic and butter. You can't go wrong, seasoned with bins, heifer dust, Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There's also, I need a plate too, John, a okay. white plate. I apologize. I hate myself right now. But don't those look great, guys? And again, we're using the R, the uh, sear kit right now for the bullseye. It's making that, it's centralizing that heat, putting it right up underneath that meat so we get a good consistent sear. Now again, we can use the other side. We're using the flat side today. We can use the other side. It's got a raised grate side. So it'll give you those grill marks that you're accustomed to with like a gas or a charcoal grill. Ooh, thank you. But John, we got any good questions from any of our friends out there in Facebook land? They, you got uh, 350 people watching right now, Jody. We had a good question. They wanted to know on thicker steaks, on thicker um, fillets, right. do you suggest reverse searing? I do, I do, because because of the thickerness, um, you know, it's, it's uh, a lot harder to cook it consistently throughout without, you know, overcooking the outside and undercooking the inside. You know, so that's where reverse searing um, or, you know, uh, slow cooking. Um, really benefits you. I like doing it 250, 275 until an internal temperature of about 100. Sear it off till an internal temperature of about 125, 130. Usually pull mine off at about 130. Let it rest. It'll carry over cook a little bit, and then I'm at, I'm at about 135 internal temperature. And that's my favorite way to do it. I love it. John, you, you got a good question? Yes. Rob asked, "Do you have to use a cast iron skillet?" You do not have to use a cast iron skillet. Absolutely not. You could use a pan. Uh, you can use the um, stick-resistant cooking mat available at Rectech.com. So go to Rectech.com and check that out under the accessories tab. Uh, those are in stock right now. I promise you, you will not be disappointed if you get that stick-resistant cooking mat. It's mesh. It allows that smoke to penetrate. Dishwasher safe. Um, but yeah, that's normally how I cook those uh, broccolinis is on that mesh uh, cooking mat. John, how would you cook those? No, exactly the same way, probably on a mesh cooking mat or right. either on uh, the griddle or the cast iron skillet. I like it. I like it. I like the cast iron skillet, Jenny, because you could put other like liquid ingredients in it, the butter, the garlic, it all kind of just stays in the skillet. Man, that smells absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. But all we did was made some holiday sauce, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, we've got uh, some broccolini right here that we've already cooked off. Sure enough. Now, before the show, I got our crab topping ready, okay? Oh. Now, this crab topping, all this is, is um, large lump crab meat, one shallot, um, two teaspoons of lemon zest, and then I put a little bit of that Ron Screaming Pig Rub in there, and I mixed it all together, and I just put it in the refrigerator, and this is actually going to top. Uh, our delicious steak. Now you want to leave this out a little bit and let it become a little bit closer to room temperature. You don't want to put that cold stuff uh, on top of the steak. Now sometimes when I'm feeling frisky, okay. ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, chicken and squirrels, I'll take some of that topping. Yeah. 
and I'll just go ahead and throw it on there while it's Ooh, on the grill. Frisky it up, Jody. You know what I'm saying? Give it, you know, let it let it get a little toasty. So I'm gonna make a little little ball, a little topping. And we'll allow that to just Oh, okay. Sit I see what right you're doing. There. Just right on top just like that. It, just 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 right on top. You know what I'm saying? That shallot. I'm gonna pick three of them. All right, Jody, we've got a question from Carl from Rhode Island. Please. He asks, what's the best way to clean the grill grates? One more time. Carl from Rhode Island asks, what's the best way to clean the grill grates? Oh, very good question. I like to use that grill grate scraper that we have available at Rectech.com. Uh, uh, aluminum foil. A ball of aluminum foil is a great tool. Um, me personally, I like to flip them upside down in the bullseye, crank that bad boy up on riot, let them run for about 30 minutes, turn the grill off, flip them over, they're clean. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, do not put them in your dishwasher. If you want to, check out grillgrate.com. They've got actually a section on their website dedicated to uh, cleaning and maintenance of the grill grates. So I would definitely check that out because I'm sure there's a lot of great tips and tricks on there as well. Um, but for me, I just let the grill get super, super hot. I let the sear kit sit in there for about 30 minutes, turn the grill off, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, I'll hit it with a little bit of oil every once in a while, and, but you're probably not supposed to do that. You know, you probably won't have to do that. They're stick resistant. They kind of, you know, maintain themselves. Um, just don't put them in the dishwasher or use any harsh chemicals on them. John, you got a good question? Yeah, this one comes from Sam Miter. Oh. He asks, is it cheaper to uh, cut up your own tenderloin or, or than buying it cut up? Yeah, absolutely. It is going to be way cheaper uh, because, of course, anything, any job that that butcher has to do, of course, they're going to tack on money for doing that. Um, so, yes, if, if you're, you know, if you need... Gosh, how many tenderloins would that do, John? 10 to Probably 11. About, if, you, if you have about 10 to 15, if you need about 10 to 15 tenderloins, definitely. 10, 10 to 15 filet mignons. Filet Excuse mignons. Me. Get that tenderloin for sure, without a doubt. You know, uh, go to Costco. That's right. Go to uh, Sam's Club. Go to mm -hmm. any of the bargain stores and get right. it there. Or find a good butcher, and they will take care of you, okay? Or just ask for it at your local grocery store. They may not have it on the display, but I guarantee they'll have it in the back. That's right. That's right. All right. I think those steaks are about done. Ooh, We're going to go ahead and take yes, those bad Jody. boys off. Do it, easy, buddy. Easy. Do it. Lemon squeezy. Guys, let's go ahead and smash oh, that yeah. share button smash as he takes button, these guys. steaks off the Give grill. Three, two, one, smash, smash it. it! But thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to follow Rectech on all social media. Set your notifications. That way you know when we go live, because we go live all the time, okay? If you're not already watching, you need to be watching, because we're always giving away stuff, something. Speaking of giving away something, I haven't given away anything in a hot minute. Yeah, it's time for you to do a giveaway, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, like I think the people job. want it. They actually like they were it. in the comment section a little bit. They also right. were uh, asking about Mail Monday. They that's said they right, missed you on right. Mail oh, Monday. Thank you guys so much. I do have a package to open up. So Mail Monday will be back in action next Monday. Sweet. Excellent. Uh, but what do they do? PM, Eastern Standard, live on Instagram. What's that, John? What do they send if they have something to oh, send you for Mail send, Monday? Uh, mail Day Mo attention, Mail Day Monday, 4301 Evans to Locks Road, Evans, Georgia. 30809. That's right. And uh, yes, Linda, he did put, uh, I mean, Rick Norris, he did put lemon zest in the sauce and lemon juice, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Ooh, that looks so good on that big Doesn't plate, it? Jody. Thank you for picking this giant, big white Look plate, at John. you. I had two smaller white plates chosen, but since we're a couple, we'll just eat off the that's same what plate. I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's cute. Becky All is right. a lucky woman to have you in the Boy. kitchen at home, my friend. Yeah. I'm telling you yeah. right now. You think she's watching right now? Uh, no. no. <laughs> Shout out to watching, you, Becky. If she was watching, she'd be like paying attention to you. <laughs> she wouldn't pay attention to me. All right, so I scraped all that garlic out. Why? Because I want to eat it, okay? So we'll take our delicious filet mignons. Yes. With that delicious crab topping. And again, mm -hmm. I dress the crab up in a suit and tie. I hit it with that Ron Screaming Pig Rub. Mm. I hit it with some lemon zest. Mm -hmm. I hit it with a shallot. Mm -hmm. um, let it sit in the refrigerator and kind of marry and meld and get to know uh, one another and each each another. Um, Charlie's going to grab me a spoon really quick and then we'll top it with some of this delicious hollandaise sauce. But this is one of my favorite sauces, uh, again, to make because there's a lot of fat and a lot of savoriness 
and just a lot going on in this plate. And this sauce, even though it looks savory, it's got a little bite to it. Yeah. And it'll give you a little kick, and it'll make it'll just make the, the most perfect harmony in mm -hmm. your mouth. I really like uh, the Hollandaise Jetty because it has a it's really rich and it kind of coats your tongue. Absolutely. It's really, really nice. Now, Jetty, we have a couple questions out All here. Right. Uh, new grill owners or people who want to buy grills, they're trying to determine which grill should uh, best fit their family size. How do All they right, determine so you that? Guys, you guys got to take into consideration um, how many folks you're going to cook for and um, during the year, okay? Me, normally, I cook for uh, technically three people. Technically, that's it. My two boys and my wife. That's all we cook for. But I do have about 15 to 20 people that come over about two to three times a year. So I do need that capacity about two to three times a year. So the RT700 partnered with the Bullseye is the best grill for me, okay? But you got to look at how many people you're cooking for on the regular and how many people you're going to cook for throughout the year. So we're going to take some of this sauce and just put it right on top oh, of there. Oh, yes. Uh. I just let it come down and coat. Mm -hmm. and again, this sauce is warm as well. We warm that crab meat back up. Wow, oh, buddy. That yeah. looks so good. So, John, this one's going to be for us. Okay. That looks great. Tom Quinn says he's never thought about using hollandaise on top of steaks like that. He really? says he usually just uses it on his Benedict. Right, right. Get a little fancy, get a little parsley for the ladies. Jody, what pellets were we using today? Today we were burning the Kingsford cherry wood pellet. I want a little bit of extra sweetness yeah. added to this dish. So we decided to use that uh, Kingsford cherry wood today. But, John, this one's going to be ours. Okay. We cooked Let's these put that one on the cutting board. Yeah. Perfection. Got a clean knife. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yes, sir. All right, John. Oh, I'm coming over. I'm coming over. Oh, yeah. But you can do this with any type of steak you like, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't like filet mignon, please use a ribeye. Uh, use a sirloin. Yeah. Use a, um, a, a, a flat iron. No, yes. no, don't use a flat iron steak. I love flat iron steak. Okay. That's Here, one of my faves. Use that spoon right there. Let me get this guy. John. Oh, oh, oh my bad. Cheese and crackers. My bad, my bad. Thanks for hanging out, buddy. Cheers. Mm. Come on. Mm. All right, see, first of all, I'm tasting the season of perfection with that Ben's Heifer Dust. Then you get that hollandaise. It's got a real velvety, right. lemony. Right. Pop. Pop. Kick to it. Little pop. Little pop. And then I'm going to get some of this crab in here. Oh my god. And it's gosh. got a shallow, it's got a shallow in there. It's got that Ron Screaming Pig Rub available at Rectech.com. Let me Woo! just post it over the top. The Jody. ladies, the ladies and men will love it. Anybody would love this. It's perfect. Cook it for your mate. Perfect. You killed mm. it. Mmm. Oh, leave. And Woo! then the crab. And then that shallot. Sends it over the top, Jenny. I mean, all of those flavors, phenomenal. That broccolini is going to be absolutely off the chain. My I don't like gosh. This guy. Giant thing being on the plate, but whatever. Jody, if they want this recipe or any of the recipes they see us do on any of our live shows, what do they need to do? Ladies and gentlemen, please drop what you're doing right now. Go to rectech.com forward slash lunch break. Sign up for these recipes. Don't be left in the dark, okay? Also, make sure you follow me on all social media That's right. at BBQ Dad Jody, okay? Hit me up. Jody at rectech.com is my email. He is Chef John at Rectech.com. That's right. He is Chef Greg at Rectech.com. Make sure you follow those guys on social media. Uh, we have that special going on right now. We've got an amazing sale going on right now at Rectech.com. Please, just go and check out Rectech.com. You'll see a beautiful banner at the top of the screen. Scroll all the way down to the bottom to sign up for the newsletter. Um, we've got a lot of amazing content coming up this week for Valentine's Day. The girls are going to knock it out of the park tomorrow. Um, Jordan and John will be on Twitter later today. Yeah. So make sure you tune in for that mm -hmm. amazing dish. Uh, President's Day is this week. Yeah, it is. Black History Month. We're doing it. It's got a big week this week. Valentine's ben Day. Ben Johnson. Robert. Robert Johnson. All right, here's your Black History fact. Uh, fact of the day. Thank you to uh, Chef John and Jordan. Mr. Robert Johnson became the first black billionaire when he sold BET back in 2001. Shout out, Robert Johnson. There you Johnson go. Shout out to you, for my friend. For making a huge impact mm -hmm. um, in the African-American community. Right. Break, breaking ceiling, breaking barriers. Breaking, breaking the barriers down, mm -hmm. son. That's for what sure. it's all about, becoming a disruptor. That's what I'm talking in about. In his space. That's, That's what, what we it's do. all about. That's what we okay? do. Guys, 
make sure you follow me on social media. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter at rectech.com. Go to rectech.com right now and check out the sale. Uh, if you purchase a RT340 or RTB380, you get $50 off of a ICER cooler or a Rectech Matador. You do not want to miss out on that. Don't be, don't still be on the fence, people. Um, thank you so much. Set your notifications that way you know when we, when we go live. And from everybody here at the Rectech Worldwide Headquarters in Evans, Georgia, God bless you. God bless the United States of America, and we'll see you at, at the, the Rec Tech. Do, 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 Rec Tech Lifestyle. Set it and it's come delicious. get it. When and the sun I starts going down, live your life the way you like. It's a Rec Tech Lifestyle. Do, 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 Rec Tech Lifestyle. Do, 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 battle and arrow. Do, 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 battle and arrow. We out.